In that single second, light traveled 186,000 miles. In that same instant, somewhere in the depths of space, a star exploded. A black hole swallowed matter equal to our entire planet and countless photons that began their journey before humans even existed finally reached their cosmic destinations. Tonight, we're embarking on a voyage that will challenge everything you think you know about scale, time, and existence itself. We're going to explore what lies beyond the familiar, beyond our planet, our solar system, even beyond our galaxy. And perhaps, in understanding the infinite, we'll find something profound about ourselves. Are you ready? Let's begin. Part 1. The Neighborhood Our Island in Space When you gaze upward on a clear night, away from city lights, you're seeing approximately 4,500 stars with your naked eye. But here's what's remarkable. Every single one of those pinpricks of light belongs to our home galaxy, the Milky Way. You're looking at family, so to speak. Our galactic home stretches roughly a hundred thousand light years from edge to edge. Now pause on that for a moment. A light year isn't a measure of time, it's distance. The distance light travels in an entire year. That's nearly six trillion miles. Multiply that by a hundred thousand and you begin to grasp the scale of just our neighborhood. The Milky Way cradles somewhere between 200 and 400 billion stars. Some estimates push even higher. Each one a sun, many with their own planetary systems, their own stories unfolding across billions of years. Our sun, that life-giving star we often take for granted, is just one ordinary yellow dwarf among hundreds of billions. But the Milky Way? It's just an island in an infinite ocean. Our nearest major neighbor is Andromeda, a spiral galaxy larger and more luminous than our own. It sits approximately two and a half million light years away. Let that sink in. When you look at Andromeda, and yes, you can see it with your unaided eyes if you know where to look, you're observing light that departed when our earliest human ancestors were just learning to chip stones into primitive tools. Andromeda contains roughly a trillion stars, a trillion opportunities for worlds, for chemistry, for complexity we can barely fathom. And it's headed our way. Don't worry. The collision won't happen for another 4.5 billion years. And when it does, it will be the gentlest catastrophe imaginable. Despite the violence implied by the word collision, the distances between individual stars are so vast that stellar impacts will be virtually non-existent. Instead, these two grand spirals will waltz through each other over hundreds of millions of years, eventually settling into a single elliptical galaxy that astronomers have affectionately nicknamed Milkomeda. The local group. Andromeda and the Milky Way don't dance alone. We're part of what astronomers call the local group a gravitationally bound collection of roughly 80 galaxies spanning about 10 million light years. It's our cosmic neighborhood, dominated by three large galaxies, the Milky Way, Andromeda, and the Triangulum Galaxy. But even this, this collection of dozens of galaxies, is merely a speck. The local group is itself embedded within the Virgo supercluster, a vast congregation of about 1,300 galaxies spanning across 110 million light years. 
Imagine shrinking the entire Milky Way down to the size of a coin. Even at that reduced scale, the Virgo supercluster would still span an area larger than a football field. And the Virgo supercluster? It's just one node in an even larger structure called Laniake, a supercluster of superclusters, containing a hundred thousand galaxies, with a total mass of one hundred million billion suns. We keep zooming out, and the universe keeps revealing deeper layers of organization. Part 2. The Cosmic Web The Architecture of Everything Recent observations suggest our observable universe contains approximately two trillion galaxies. Two trillion. Each one home to hundreds of billions of stars. The numbers become almost meaningless at this scale. Our minds weren't involved to comprehend such magnitudes. But what's truly extraordinary isn't just the number of galaxies, it's how they're arranged. Galaxies aren't scattered randomly through space like salt thrown across a table. Instead, they form something called the cosmic web a universe-spanning structure of filaments, sheets, and walls, separated by enormous voids where almost nothing exists. Picture this. Vast chains of galaxies connected by invisible dark matter filaments, creating a three-dimensional web that looks almost biological. Like neurons in an impossibly vast brain like the structure of a sponge magnified beyond comprehension. These filaments can stretch for hundreds of millions of light years, connecting galaxy clusters like cities linked by luminous highways. The Great Walls and the Great Nothing The largest known structure is called the Great Wall, a sheet of galaxies extending across hundreds of millions of light years. Standing at one end, even traveling at the speed of light, it would take you longer than the current age of Earth to reach the other side. But the voids, the empty spaces between these structures, are equally mind-bending. The Butte's void, sometimes called the Great Nothing, stretches 330 million light-years across and contains fewer than 60 galaxies in a region that should house around 2,000. If our Milky Way were located in the center of such a void, our entire understanding of astronomy would have been delayed by centuries. We might have believed well into the space age that we lived in a much smaller, lonelier universe, just our galaxy and perhaps a handful of others scattered across an otherwise empty cosmos. How we know what we know. You might be wondering how do we even measure these incomprehensible distances? How can we possibly know what lies billions of light years away? The story begins with a woman named Henrietta Swan Leavitt, working at Harvard Observatory in the early 1900s. She was studying variable stars, stars that brighten and dim in regular cycles, in what we now know are small satellite galaxies orbiting the Milky Way. Leavitt discovered something remarkable. There was a precise relationship between how bright these stars truly were and how long their cycles lasted. This gave humanity its first cosmic yardstick. If you could measure how long it took a star to brighten and fade, you could calculate its true brightness. And if you knew its true brightness and could measure how bright it appeared from Earth, simple physics would tell you how far away it must be. Edwin Hubble used this technique in the 1920s to prove that Andromeda lay far beyond our own galaxy, a discovery that fundamentally changed our understanding of existence. We weren't just citizens of a galaxy, 
we were citizens of a universe of galaxies. But Kepsiad variable stars can only take us so far, maybe a hundred million light years. For greater distances, astronomers developed other methods. Type A1 supernovae, exploding white dwarf stars that always reach roughly the same peak brightness, can be seen across billions of light years. They became our beacons into the deep cosmos. It was by studying these distant supernovae in 1998 that astronomers made one of the most shocking discoveries in scientific history. The universe's expansion isn't slowing down, it's speeding up. Dark energy, the invisible accelerator,